it. I could not even tell you right now exactly how much it was in the past year, except that I've had to do taxes. So, um, recently. <laughs> and that hurts. <laughs> anyway, though. But, you know, like Oscar Wilde says, um, I'm quite happy to pay taxes. I'd just be twice as happy to pay half as much. <laughs> anyway, um, um, so here we are. Uh, YouTube uh, ran into a problem. Uh, it was apparently um, an existing uh, emotional uh, problem for YouTube and its advertisers as a bubble was pinpricked by the Washington um, or Wall Street Journal. Uh, with an article that may or may not be bogus. Doesn't matter if it's bogus. At this point, the damage has been done. And the um, uh, end result is the loss of advertising revenue. Now, um, the way that this shapes up, we're going to sort of treat this like a war college uh, situation briefing to tell you where everything is at at the moment. And then we'll um, uh, uh, go ahead and, and discuss some uh, of the strategies and tactics that are under uh, that, that are potentially available to you as an awakening human if you're caught up in this. This video is primarily for those people that are actually uh, caught up in this and may have to react to it. So our uh, strategy and tactics be briefing begins with a brief uh, discussion of where we're at and what's happening. And so we have YouTube up here. Can we see that? No, no chance in hell. Okay, so YouTube has an advertising issue. Uh, the advertisers are trying to sell things. And whether it's a position, a, a product, uh, an idea, whatever, just does not matter. The advertisers are trying to sell things. Uh, in the process of trying to sell things, these advertisers uh, have submitted themselves to YouTube's algorithm. And the algorithm, in the advertiser's view, uh, is sloppy. Now, we've also got to acknowledge a lot of the advertisers are sloppy. They don't, when they set up their ads, they don't uh, set up exactly uh, what they think they are or what they should be setting up in terms of their uh, limitations and constraints uh, because YouTube and Google allow you via negative selection to isolate and not associate with uh, anything you want that you can find and, and clue, clue into uh, based on a key word. So uh, you, YouTube and Google in that regard both in the YouTube advertising platform and I, even even Twitter. Uh, these are the ones I'm most familiar with. All three of these uh, platforms allow you to, as an advertiser, disassociate from, law, from any level of language. So the onus is really on the advertisers. They could have done this all along and never bothered with any of these issues. If the advertisers were smart, they would employ uh, really good uh, radical linguists and uh, go through and, and uh, set up ad campaigns that were exclusionary and were, were targeted exactly to the people they were after. <laughs> I did this. I was very successful at it. It's very relatively easy. And they, these platforms, YouTube, Google, and Twitter, assist you in this and that their software is very reasonably well designed. And so if you know what you're, you're thinking, if you think about it, you don't even have to know what you're doing. You can do it as a novice. You can go through there and decide, no, I don't want my, my video associated with, um, uh, you know, uh, any words around the quoted phrase, white supremacy. I don't care where it comes up. I don't care if it's an academic discussion or if someone's touting it as a lifestyle. I don't want to be associated with it. It's that easy. <laughs> so, you know, it's not a problem. Anyway, so advertisers are trying to sell stuff. They ran into these word issues. Uh, the Wall Street Journal uh, being uh, buttheads and, and um, uh, basic dicks <laughs> um, decided they were going to use that to come on up and nail what they saw as a bubble that was uh, supporting um, their hated enemy, the alt anything. <laughs> you know, because they're good. They don't care if it's alt right. They don't care if it's alt left. If they don't control it. Uh, they don't want it around, okay? Uh, basically, that's really what it amounts to. Wall Street Journal here will just read in any legacy media, any old mainstream media. Now, they think the way old uh, mainstream media thinks, okay? Uh, these guys, so therefore, because they have been dependent upon advertising their entire existence, and because YouTube was not smart enough to come up with a, any other kind of a operating um, algorithm for, for their structure, operating mechanism, and so relied on the old uh, print media uh, pay, paid advertising kind of an approach, we're in this particular, some, excuse me, some people are in this particular problem. Okay, so the Wall Street Journal decides to pop this particular bubble of advertising dollars ads and dollars that had been feeding the alt-anything. Alt-left, alt-right, it just did not matter. 
And so uh, uh, Wall Street Journal writes a, the article, they get everybody whipped up, and the advertisers leave the platform. They, they hold back their dollars. So their, their advertising dollars are going away, and, and Wall Street Journal and the legacy media is of the opinion that this bursts the bubble and causes the deflation of the alt media. Rather, you know, takes away its, uh, its uh, operational base, uh, its funding. And that's, that's their goal there. Get rid of the funding. And so they, uh, they try that, and that's what they end up with. But it's only temporary so far because YouTube still needs to stay in business. So YouTube still needs to add the advertisers. So it's not enough that the advertisers have decided to, to leave. YouTube has to say to the, itself, okay, well, how do we deal with getting them back? And once they're back, how do we keep them happy? And so on. So YouTube is developing a strategy around this. Uh, as everybody is. Uh, those that are affected by it, uh, those like myself that are marginally affected, not by uh, not in funding, but in the um, the nature of what's going on in terms of information available and so on. Uh, so, uh, YouTube strategy is uh, is controlled by a keywords. That's what they're attempting to implement right now. Uh, there may be another strategy behind that, though, in the sense another strategy to be rolled out later on. And that other strategy could involve, um, uh, let's just say, uh, uh, a human intervention through software in at least uh, getting approval. And this would be some uh, to get advertising. So this would be some form of a partnership approach. Not only would you have to be authenticated and vetted as a human that they could reach uh, through, you know, and be taxed, basically, uh, reach through your banks and so on, but you'd also have to be... Um, uh, vetted as somebody who isn't going to use language they don't want you to use. And uh, that's really what it comes down to. And so, uh, regardless of, of what kind of language it is, if it falls on, you know, too far that way or too far this way, you, they don't want you using it. And so, um, except for when they want you to use it. Another, another thing entirely. Uh, so here we are um, in this situation. Now, the people that have been damaged by this, curiously, of course, um, are going to be all of the alt-right, who are the intended target of the Wall Street Journal. But also, uh, we have this situation where we have the... That didn't work out at all. Man, it's just too, um, too wet in here to, to do that. Okay, so we'll try another, another tack. Okay, so the, um, uh, the people who have been damaged here are curiously not merely the alt-right. Uh, it also includes the um, entire spectrum of the uh, uh, um, alt-sexuality or alt-gender, uh, alt-identity uh, thinking. Okay, so that entire genre, uh, or, or not even a genre because there's multiple genres within it, uh, that entire area of thought within YouTube uh, has been uh, slammed by these, these ad boycotts. And... Um, uh, that was a, a developing problem before the Wall Street Journal decided to come in and muck about with things. Uh, this is simply because the uh, tendency of the content was towards the extreme. And then within that area, they found themselves making some money off of their content. And so the only thing they could really grasp at that time was that it was the ex extremity of their content that was drawing the audience. And then they would produce something more extreme, and it was on a self-perpetuating cycle, drawing more audience and more money and so on, until basically they ended up... Uh, as all people on YouTube do, or any, anybody in the media this way, you end up consuming yourself and narrowing in on a focus that you think is what draws the audience. And so uh, you become a, basically a caricature of yourself. And that works for a while, and then the audience falls off. Uh, so most of the uh, YouTube and other alt-media uh, practitioners, uh, many of them are just new enough, they have yet to go through a single cycle. Now, a... Um, uh, a mental cycle can be thought of in the print world as two years. Uh, basically, it's 26 months, uh, but for our thinking, two years. And the uh, two-year uh, uh, framework means that every two years, you can repeat the articles you had two years back, mostly, entirely, completely, because no, A, nobody's going to remember them, that's still reading your magazine, but also, in that two-year period of time, you've cycled through the entire readership and, and basically replaced all of the... Uh, readers as people are drawn to it and then drop off. Uh, this is also true now of all of the people that are on YouTube. Uh, and it basically content creators uh, that had been monetizing uh, to um, 
create a living for themselves. And so in, in doing so, the new media, uh, m much of it had yet to reach a natural cycle, and then this came along. The natural cycle might be for, say, the um, uh, gaming sites. You may find that uh, the gaming sites have a million or two or three million uh, subscribers, but they may cycle through all of those subscribers in a very short period of time, 18 months, uh, 16 months, a year, who knows. And by cycling through, it would be someone that uh, subscribed to their channel and then watched uh, very diligently and then slowly over time became um, uh, distracted, so to speak. Their attention wandered to other areas until they basically don't watch that channel anymore. Uh, that process on gaming channels might be in a range from two months, where you're bored with this guy after two months, but some of these other fellows have enough uh, things of interest that you may hang around on their site for six months a year. I, I, it's, it's not, I have yet to determine that. I wasn't really interested in even going into that. Uh, it was just an ancillary part of this. Uh, so the numbers are not solid there, but the concept is. The, and it has to do, basically, with a boredom threshold. Sh threshold. When do you get bored with a content producer's content? And at that stage, you go and find someone else. You piggyback and you go on. So, um, I've talked to a number of advertisers, a um, number of people that work for advertisers, uh, or excuse me, number of people that work in advertising for companies. Um, and uh, uh, they're, so I've learned some things about the advertising uh, world in the new media, and I've discovered that, for instance, uh, the uh, many beauty channels have a very high cycle rate uh, that they they tend to have very fiercely loyal followers short duration though they just don't stick with the channel all that long um, but can be effectively advertised to while they're following the channel uh, unfortunately for those channels though uh, their longevity is very very short as well uh, and it and it seems to have a bell curve and peak and fall off within about four years. And it probably has to do with the changing nature of the individuals involved and the um, uh, spread of interest you get as you grow older. And so, uh, in any event, these channels uh, fade out fairly quickly. And uh, those channels are also trapped in the extreme uh, aspect of this. Uh, they get started in, there are some um, perks to doing the YouTube thing, and then, in order to keep it continuing, they end up getting more and more extreme, and so attempt to draw more audience that way and grow it. And uh, the metaphor of the model doesn't really work for that particular uh, niche market that way. Uh, so, uh, they've been hit hard by advertising ban. Uh, the um, alt-sexual media, uh, alt-sexuality part of this, alt-gender part of it, um, uh, of it all has been hit hard. Alt-right has been hit hard. Uh, everybody advertising on uh, YouTube or getting advertising revenue on YouTube has been hit very hard, except our legacy media buddies of CNN and you know MSNBC and all of these guys, uh, Wall Street Journal, any of those kind of fellows. So those guys are still uh, doing well with their corporate buddies. Now the point of this particular talk was to to desire um, to uh, bring up the idea and, and enlighten uh, the thinking towards alternative means for using the same platform. Because fundamentally, here's, here's the problem YouTube faces. They can't get rid of all the alts, all right? Uh, that's a huge chunk of their audience. So, for instance, if um, YouTube existed only with uh, approved sources, I'd never go there. I'd never watch videos, wouldn't spend a moment of my time on it, you know? Uh, nor, as a creator, would I put stuff there. Um, uh, I would put stuff over in um, a paid site even, even like Vimeo. Uh, that sort of thing. Uh, so uh, YouTube has a very definitive limit here, and what they're going to run up against, and what they have yet to grasp, and they're in the process of uh, going through that grasping and understanding, uh, and having it become internalized in the noggins of the of the uh, people that are currently the buttheads and and dicks in charge, uh, is that um, it is the alts that are the counterculture, that are the drawing source, that are the emotional media. Uh, it is not legacy. So, for instance, let, let us look at it in another way. Should YouTube decide to go over to entirely approved legacy media sources for news and everything, they're basically signing their own um, uh, death mail or death warrant as a as a corporation because the uh, we can see that uh, CNN, MSNBC, broadcast media, Wall Street Journal, all these things are dying, had been dying hugely, uh, and are not growing a new audience. 
So they're, uh, and are not attractive to any of the generations uh, other than those that were raised on them. So they, uh, they've got a real issue there. They, they need the alt media. They need it to continue. They need it to be healthy in order to continue to bring in those people that could be drawn there. So YouTube's approach at this point is going to be uh, as follows, my prediction. They'll draw a Berlin Wall uh, between two halves. They'll have the alt over on one side, and they'll have the approved on the other. And uh, they will still attempt to try and drive their uh, alt traffic this way, and they, I think, will become... Um, they will be sanguine about the uh, generation and death of the alt side. In other words, the alt media, not receiving dollars as the uh, legacy media does, will necessarily generate and die lots and lots and lots of creators that will come on in and not be able to make it go. They won't be able to come up with a metaphor or some theme that allows them to, to make it uh, without the advertising revenue coming in. Uh, so um, some will. Now, in doing so, in doing this wall here, as well as uh, hurting the alt-right, alt-political, let's call them that, and the alt-sexual um, uh, gender, alt-sex-gen, um, and not only in hurting those guys, they've also damaged all of the, uh, uh, the body people, male or female, bodybuilders or beauty channels, all right? Uh, so they've damaged those guys. There's a lot of them. There's a surprising number of those guys. They've also damaged all the health channels. Uh, that actually was part of their goal. Um, and they've damaged all of the um, uh, gaming channels. And they've also, uh, they want to take out some of the stunts as well. That's part of the things they're trying to get rid of. Anyway, so they've got this list, and they've kind of got it segregated this way. They don't care so much about these guys, really. Oh, they just want them controlled. Uh, they don't want them gone, and they're quite happy to support them. Uh, these guys, they want gone, the alt-politicals, and the uh, alt-sex gen, they want under tight control. Um, and they're going to try and use them. This is the way that they're thinking. That is to say, the powers that be. And so, if you happen to be, as I am, smack into this range right here, or I'm even worse, because I'm like um, uh, seriously woo-woo here, so we'll put woo-woo way down. All right? And so under those circumstances, since I'm down here, um, and they're really after us, uh, I knew what I was getting into, right? I mean, I, it was like um, part of the proposition. I was an adult when I went in and did this. Oh, some of the shit I'm saying here might get me killed. Who knows, you know? Uh, these people are wacko. They're bad shit. They're crazy. They don't behave like normal, regular humans. Uh, there, uh, many of the peop uh, people at the top are pedophiles. Many of them are being blackmailed. Uh, probably most of them are constantly stoned on all kinds of bizarre drugs we've never even heard of. Um, and that's our world. <laughs> that's the world. Welcome to our world, okay? And uh, so, so this is the world we live in. So, if you're up in any of this area here, uh, I feel bad for you guys. I feel bad for you. You're, you're just collateral damage. You know, uh, they wanted to control us. If you're down here in the uh, alt-sex gen stuff, there's, there's nothing I can really recommend for you because it's been seriously targeted. Uh, if you've been making money that way, maybe you can go back to it if you get extremely uh, academic and, and uh, that sort of thing. You'll still have the audience to some extent, and they might allow ad revenue to come back in. But it seems a little dodgy at this point. Uh, up in this area here, there's some things you can do. You have to recognize that what they're doing is they're controlling you through the advertising. Advertising dollars, advertising dollars. And um, uh, in doing that, uh, if you want to control, uh, if you want to take back your own control of your own uh, situation, then you need to sever that bond to the advertising dollars and just write it off and figure some other way of making money. So you can go to pay-per-view where you have enough of a loyal audience that you're able to set up a paywall and people pay a couple of bucks a month to see or week or whatever it is uh, to see your videos maybe on an individual basis and it's pennies who knows uh, the micro payments idea is really good where you uh, hook up with um, uh, bitcoin and that kind of thing and then send out a password and, and your videos are up for a short period of time and then they they drop off um, and you can manage all of that on your own on your own pc 
Uh, there's also the idea of sales directly in the sense of selling uh, like uh, Philip DeFranco sells t-shirts. So you can sell stuff directly. Once you get a loyal audience, uh, they will send you in dollars by buying your stuff directly. And then you're no longer dependent on this on the advertising revenue. Uh, beyond the pay-per-view, the micropayments and direct sales, you can also work on the idea of independent advertising, okay? Independent advertising. Well, independent advertising. It's down there. Um, because here's the, here's the idea on that. That's the idea that, uh, okay, so um, let's take the example of one of these uh, fashionistas. Uh, they get, uh, frequently they get hooked on this whole YouTube thing because they go on out and they do something or they see someone else doing it. And uh, then the clothing manufacturers uh, mail them a bunch of crap, right? And so they do a try-on or um, whatever, they, whatever it is they call them, uh, a modeling, where they model the clothes that have been sent to them free by, the, by these people. And they're just thrilled. They got all this free, free uh, stash here, free, free clothing. And this is just cool as hell. It can't beat this. And then they're they're hooked, you know. It's like drug dealers. Hey, here, here. You want you want a little bit of crack? It's good for you, you know. Wake you up in the morning. Um, anyway, so um, uh, the uh, fashionistas uh, are in that situation where uh, they can actually do this for as long as period of time as they're into that that particular mindset, and they're able to develop that audience. If they have the personality that draws the audience, they can do direct sales for uh, uh, or of independent advertising uh, for the people that provide them with the products. That is to say they can make um, infomercials basically and uh, so uh, make revenue that way where the advertisers pay you directly for a product that you produce, right? And so um, uh, one thing that might really uh, shake up the world would be if a lot of the YouTubers that fall into these categories right here that had skills were to go on out and independently make spec advertising for companies they happen to like not for showing necessarily maybe there'd be competitions and, and stuff i don't know but also uh, to show the companies if the companies like it maybe they would sponsor the ad you know it costs you a little bit of time and effort and ingenuity to put together something that you think would help sell their product or get their message across and so on to the point where those people are likely to give you money um and support your efforts in the future so uh talent is usually supported in history. Uh, by a number of different approaches, talent usually ends up finding its way. So if you're good at this kind of thing, that's a really good approach. So there are other other options than their advertising dollars. And it, it you know, there's a lot of people aren't going to want to hear this. It means working. <laughs> you got to get off your butt and you got to do stuff. You got to, you know, set up the, the sales connections to the corporations, all this kind of stuff. All of this thing, all these things you can learn. None of this is beyond you. You figured out how to use all this technology and make these videos. So getting the things uh, funded is within your capability. This is something that is not necessarily easy. It'll be challenging. But when you're done, you'll own that. And you won't be, you know, being strangled by the your short hairs when the advertisers cough. So, um... Uh, anyway, so uh, that's, the, that's the rant of the day, a little bit of a whiteboard thing. Remember, there are other options to YouTube's advertising in order to make money, and you still use YouTube. Now, here's the thing about YouTube. They need you. They need that audience. You'll note uh, that a lot of the other crap they've got out there does not sustain a long-term uh, relationship with an audience. The audiences come and go and, and flow through. And that's fine insofar as YouTube is concerned because they can report millions of people are watching this kind of video and millions of people are watching that kind of video. From an advertiser's viewpoint, though, most of those millions of people are a waste because most of those people are not going to have any kind of a brand identifi identification or brand loyalty that piggybacks off of that video or that genre into their product. Unlike the alts, all right? All of them. I mean, look, Alex Jones makes um, uh, enough money to support a crew uh, doing that work there uh, with his sales, with direct sales. So there's your role model. There's somebody that can, has gotten out and invented a way to get it done and, and has achieved it and gotten it done. So, guys, it's not that difficult to do. And, as I say, it cuts the, the cord on advertising. Now, YouTube, admittedly, doesn't need me, all right? Doesn't need any of us. At the moment, it's getting 400 hours of programming uh, videos being uploaded every damn minute. So it does not give a rat's ass about any individual given or, or creator uh, at all 
uh, because we're replaceable. We're self-replacing. As soon as I stop making videos, whatever little time slice I'm allotted by universe is taken over by somebody else with their own ideas and off they go. So, so YouTube doesn't care about us on an individual basis at that level. But it does care enough, even though it's a failing company, never made a dime in profit, that sort of thing, is supported by Google, its parent, it does care enough to form and spend millions of dollars on all these creator promotion uh, things, their idea, their version of the uh, Oscars, <coughs> their version of all these creator schools, all these things in their entire and the staff devoted to um, to uh, corralling, and that's really what it is. That's the whole point. It's not to pump up the creators. It's not to pump up the YouTube brand because they don't have to do that. The technology is so nascent, and there's so many trillions of people on the planet, billions that have yet to even see YouTube, that growth is not an issue for them at this stage. But what is an issue is controlling the creators. So they've corralled them. They're attempting to corral them with all these free gifts sucking you in, saying, hey, look, you get a silver whoozy, was it? Because you've got 100,000 subscribers. And oh, by the way, we want to invite you over here to this creator's um, workshop where we'll teach you how to do shit. And basically, they're teaching you how to do stuff their way and not do those things they don't want you to do. And so they're, they're, it's a control mechanism. And it's working. <laughs> and it works really well. Uh, so, you know, there's no reason for them to stop that. Uh, and, like I say, they don't need any, any individual or even a genre of uh, creators, except that they really do. And this is what they're in the process of discovering right at the moment. Uh, and it'll take them some months to discover this, okay? It's going to take, they're going to have to take a couple of big hits before this really gels out. And I would not look for the advertiser issue to be resolved for 18 or 20 months, uh, minimum. Uh, it'll be up and down, up and down like currencies uh, fluctuating over that period of time as they go through the, this process of discovering uh, what actually, what YouTube actually is. Now, I'm actually, I've done a lot of analysis on YouTube because I had to go through and do that in order to be effective in, in the process of uh, going through and uh, discovering uh, what is, uh, or discovering some of its underlying operating um, principles. And uh, it's going to end up discovering who and what its audience really is. Uh, that discovery is going to change how YouTube does things. I have some, some uh, vague hints that, about some things that YouTube probably doesn't even know about itself because I had to run uh, my spiders against the YouTube comments and then had to figure out how to um, encode um, uh, context and other uh, components that I usually seek out in the text. So uh, I learned some things about YouTube and its audience. Uh, it was such uh, learning that led me to my uh, projection that, oh, well, based on YouTube alone, Trump's going to win and he's going to win in a landslide. Uh, this was back last year, obviously. And it was uh, during the um, June, July, and August period that I got really intense on YouTube and ran all these things through. And it was at that point, actually, that I happened to catch in real time some of the algorithm, algorithm changes just in the way my data capture was working and the fact that I was doing analysis on YouTube in order to fold it in as yet another social media uh, being folded into our, our process. So uh, my supposition about YouTube's understanding is that they have a view of their own business that's that's woefully inadequate to the reality of their business and they're going to run into a big wall if they proceed along a, a certain path because that will kill their business basically um, in terms of the growth and so on and will all migrate off somewhere else. That's not the case at the moment. Everything in terms of my data sets shows that we're in for a very rough couple of years with the um, all media with the media war and that other strategy could involve um, uh, let's just say, uh, uh, a human inter intervention through software in at least uh, getting approval. And this would be some uh, to get advertising. So this would be some form of a partnership approach. Not only would you have to be authenticated and vetted as a human that they could reach uh, through, you know, and be taxed, basically, uh, reach through your banks and so on, but you'd also have to be um, uh, vetted as somebody who isn't going to use language they don't want you to use. And uh, that's really what it comes down to. And so, regardless of, of what kind of language it is, if it falls on, you know, too far that way or too far this way, you, they don't want you using it. And so, um, except for when they want you to use it, another, another thing entirely. Uh, so here we are um, in this situation. Now, the people that have been damaged by this, curiously, of course, um, are going to be all of the alt-right, who are the intended target of the Wall Street Journal. But also, uh, we have this situation where we have the... That didn't work out at all. Man, it's just too, um, too wet in here to 
to do that. Okay, so we'll try another another attack. Okay, so the um, uh, the people who've been damaged here are curiously not merely the alt right. Uh, it also includes the um, entire spectrum of the uh, uh, um, alt sexuality or alt gender, uh, alt identity uh, thinking. Okay, so that entire genre, uh, or or not even a genre because there's multiple genres within it. Uh, that entire area of thought within YouTube uh, has been uh, slammed by these these ad boycotts, and. Um, uh, that was a, a developing problem before the Wall Street Journal decided to come in and muck about with things. Uh, this is simply because the uh, tendency of the content was towards the extreme. And then within that area, they found themselves making some money off of their content. And so the only thing they could really grasp at that time was exactly uh, what they think they are or what they should be setting up in terms of their uh, limitations and constraints. Uh, because YouTube and Google allow you, via negative selection, to isolate and not associate with uh, anything you want that you can find and, and clue, clue into uh, based on a key word. So uh, you, YouTube and Google in that regard, both in the YouTube advertising platform and I, even, even Twitter, uh, these are the ones I'm most familiar with. All three of these uh, platforms allow you to, as an advertiser, disassociate from, law, from any level of language. So the onus is really on the advertisers. They could have done this all along and never bothered with any of these issues. If the advertisers were smart, they would employ uh, really good uh, radical linguists and uh, go through and, and uh, set up ad campaigns that were exclusionary and were, were targeted exactly to the people they were after. <laughs> I did this. I was very successful at it. It's very relatively easy. And the, these platforms, YouTube, Google, and Twitter, assist you in this and that their software is very reasonably well designed. And so, if you know what you're, you're think, if you think about it, you don't even have to know what you're doing. You can do it as a novice. You can go through there and decide. No, I don't want my my video associated with, um, uh, you know, uh, any words around the quoted phrase "white supremacy." I don't care where it comes up. I don't care if it's an academic discussion or if someone's touting it as a lifestyle. I don't want to be associated with it. It's that easy. <laughs> so you know, it's not a problem. Anyway, so advertisers are trying to sell stuff. They ran into these word issues. Uh, the Wall Street Journal uh, being uh, buttheads and, and um, uh, basic dicks <laughs> um, decided they were going to use that to come on up and nail what they saw as a bubble that was uh, supporting um, their hated enemy, the alt anything. <laughs> you know, because they don't care if it's alt right, they don't care if it's alt left. If they don't control it, uh, they don't want it around, okay? Uh, basically, that's really what it amounts to. Wall Street Journal here will just read in any legacy media, any old mainstream media. On it, I could not even tell you right now exactly how much it was in the past year, except that I've had to do taxes. So, um, recently. <laughs> and that hurts. <laughs> anyway, though. But, you know, like Oscar Wilde says, um, I'm quite happy to pay taxes. I'd just be twice as happy to pay half as much. <laughs> anyway, um, um, so, here we are. Uh, YouTube uh, ran into a problem. Uh, it was apparently um, an existing uh, emotional uh, problem for YouTube and its advertisers as a bubble was pinpricked by the Washington um, or Wall Street Journal uh, with an article that may or may not be bogus. Doesn't matter if it's bogus. At this point, the damage has been done, and the. Um, uh, end result is the loss of advertising revenue. Now, um, the way that this shapes up, we're going to sort of treat this like a war college uh, situation briefing to tell you where everything is at at the moment, and then we'll um, uh, uh, go ahead and, and discuss some uh, of the strategies and tactics that are under uh, that, that are potentially available to you as an awakening human if you're caught up in this. This video is primarily for those people that are actually uh, caught up in this and may have to react to it. So our uh, strategy and tactics be briefing begins with a brief uh, discussion of where we're at and what's happening. And so we have YouTube up here. Can we see that? No, no, chance in hell. Okay. So YouTube has an advertising issue. Uh, the advertisers are trying to sell things. 
And whether it's a position, a, a product, a, an idea, whatever, it just does not matter. The advertisers are trying to sell things. Uh, in the process of trying to sell things, these advertisers uh, have submitted themselves to YouTube's algorithm, and the algorithm, in the advertiser's view, uh, is sloppy. Now, we've also got to acknowledge a lot of the advertisers are sloppy. They don't, when they set up their ads, they don't uh, set up exactly that it was the ex extremity of their content that was drawing the audience. And then they would produce something more extreme, and it was on a self-perpetuating cycle, drawing more audience and more money and so on, until basically they ended up, uh, as all people on YouTube do, or any, anybody in the media this way, you end up consuming yourself and narrowing in on a focus that you think is what draws the audience. And so uh, you become a, basically a caricature of yourself. And that works for a while, and then the audience falls off. Uh, so most of the uh, YouTube and other alt-media uh, practitioners, uh, many of them are just new enough, they have yet to go through a single cycle. Now, a, um, uh, a mental cycle can be thought of in the print world as two years. Uh, basically, it's 26 months. Uh, but for our thinking, two years. And the uh, two-year... Uh, a framework means that every two years you can repeat the articles you had two years back, mostly entirely, completely, because no, A, nobody's going to remember them that's still reading your magazine, but also in that two-year period of time, you've cycled through the entire readership and, and basically replaced all of the uh, readers as people are drawn to it and then drop off. Uh, this is also true now of all of the people that are on YouTube. Uh, and it, basically content creators uh, that had been monetizing uh, to um, create a living for themselves. And so in, in doing so, the new media, uh, m much of it had yet to reach a natural cycle, and then this came along. The natural cycle might be for, say, the um, uh, gaming sites. You may find that uh, the gaming sites have a million or two or three million uh, subscribers, but they may cycle through all of those subscribers in a very short period of time, 18 months, uh, 16 months, a year, who knows. And by cycling through, it would be someone that uh, subscribed to their channel and then watched uh, very diligently and then slowly over time became um, uh, distracted, so to speak. Their attention wandered to other areas until they basically don't watch that channel anymore. Uh, that process on gaming channels might be in a range. Now, they think the way old uh, mainstream media thinks, okay? Uh, these guys, so therefore, because they have been dependent upon advertising their entire existence, and because YouTube was not smart enough to come up with a, any other kind of a operating um, algorithm for, for their structure, operating mechanism, and so relied on the old uh, print media uh, pay, paid advertising kind of an approach, we're in this particular, so, excuse me, some people are in this particular problem. Okay, so the Wall Street Journal decides to pop this particular bubble of advertising dollars, ads, and dollars that had been feeding the alt-anything. Alt-left, alt-right, it just did not matter. And so uh, uh, Wall Street Journal writes a, the article, they get everybody whipped up, and the advertisers leave the platform. They, they hold back their dollars. So their, their advertising dollars are going away, and, and Wall Street Journal and the legacy media is of the opinion that this bursts the bubble and causes the deflation of the alt-media. Rather, you know, takes away its, uh, its uh, operational base, uh, its funding. And that's, that's their goal there, get rid of the funding. And so they, uh, they try that, and that's what they end up with. But it's only temporary so far because YouTube still needs to stay in business. So YouTube still needs to have the advertisers. So it's not enough that the advertisers have decided to, to leave. YouTube has to say to the, itself, okay, well, how do we deal with getting them back? And once they're back, how do we keep them happy? And so on. So YouTube is developing a strategy around this. Uh, as everybody is. Uh, those that are affected by it, uh, those like myself that are marginally affected, not by uh, not in funding, but in the, um, the nature of what's going on in terms of information available and so on. Uh, so, uh, YouTube's strategy is, uh, is controlled by a key words. That's what they're attempting to implement right now. Uh, there may be another strategy behind that, though, in the sense another strategy to be rolled out later on.